Hey guys, what's up? It's Mokozonki, and welcome to my herb burning guide. I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the most amount of herbs and basically the most awesome possible farm run that you can possibly achieve. So there's several things that you need to get the most out of your farm runs, and there are quite a bit of requirements, and I'll go over those, some of them in kind of slideshow form here, just showing you guys uh, some basic things that you really want to have, and then I'll go more in depth later on, and I'll show you a full run and how exactly I go about that. So first of all, I'd recommend 73 plus farming to make max profit with Lantidimes. If you are below 73 farming, I would recommend to do Aventos, which you need 54. And if you're below that, just check out the calculator in the description. Um, there will be a link to the RS Wiki, and it has a very, very good calculator that updates every day, and it tells you which herb you want to be planting to make the most money. So at the moment, that is Lantidimes, but by the time you're watching this video, that very well may have changed. So just keep that in mind. So how to get bonus herbs, which is more herbs than you would get if you just planted the herb with super compost and picked it. Um, magic Secutars, which come from the Fairy Tale 1 quest, they give 10% bonus herbs. The Green Fingers Aura from the Loyalty Shop, um, you can upgrade this four times. So you get the original one and upgrade it three times after that. And um, it goes... 2.5% more herbs, then 5%, 7.5%, and then 10% more herbs. So it does cost a lot of loyalty points to upgrade, um, but it also has an effect where during the 20 minutes where it's activated, none of your plants can die. And herbs do tend to die, and when you're using more expensive seeds, that's a really handy ability to have because it gives them less chance of dying. But anyway, the next uh, and the more, probably the most important item for farm runs is the Juju Farming Potions. I do have a guide, which I'll link in the description, on how to obtain the ingredients you need to make the Juju Farming Potions. And also in that guide, I will have all the requirements for the Juju uh, Habitat, the Herblor Habitat, because there is a lot of requirements. Um, not enough space to list them here, but it is in the guide. And finally, some other nice things to have that will really help your profit is if you have completed the Mauritania Elite task, that's pretty hefty requirements. But if you have completed the Mauritania Elite task system, you can get double Marcella mushrooms. Um, I would still plant them even if you haven't completed the Elite task system because they're still pretty good money even if you're only getting single ones. And also, if you completed the hard desert tasks, you get double cactus spines. Um, which can also add up to be some really nice money as well, so I'd recommend to do that as soon as you can. And then finally, uh, My Arms Big Adventure quest and Edgar's Ruse quest are very important. Uh, My Arms Big Adventure unlocks the fifth herb patch, and Edgar's Ruse unlocks the teleport to get to the fifth herb patch. So you really want to get those two done as soon as possible. Um, they're also useful just for other quests, because they are required in other high-level quests that you probably want to do someday, so I'd recommend to do those two. But without further ado, let us get into the actual farm run itself and show you guys how you do it. One quick item that is very handy that I kind of neglected to put on the whole slideshow thing where I was listing items that you want to have is the Scroll of Life. You can buy this from Dungeoneering for 10,000 Dungeoneering tokens, so it's not very expensive. And what that will do is 10% of the time when you harvest uh, a herb patch, you will get the seed back. That's not very useful for lower level herbs like Aventos and... Raynars and stuff like that, where the seeds aren't worth very much. But once you start planting uh, lantidimes and dwarf weeds, getting that seed back one out of every ten times, or basically once every two herb runs, can really help a lot and really save you some cash. So that's what you want to get. So this is how I gear up for my farm run. I have the teleport to Trollheim runes, so I can get to my fifth patch, which is the one that I do first, somewhat ironically. And then um, I have. Lantidime seeds, five of them because there's five patches, five super compost, a Marcella mushroom spore, um, an ectophile and explorer's ring, which I did not go over in the uh, initial slideshow kind of thing, but the ectophile is from the Ghost Ahoy quest, the explorer's ring is from the Lumbridge task system. And the reason why I didn't mention these is because these have very low requirements, um, and I imagine that almost everyone watching this guide will have them, and if you do not, Ghost Ahoy quest, Lumbridge task system. And then I do have the uh, Juju Farming Potion in my inventory as well. So the first thing I do is I just teleport to a fairy ring. Uh, you don't have to have a Tackle Zo, just get to any fairy ring. It really doesn't matter which one. And we're going to go to the Morcello Mushroom Patch first. And uh, that's the one I always do first just because it's nice to get it out of the way. So mine might not be planted yet because I don't think it's been quite four hours since my last herb run, but I'll do it for the sake of the video anyway. Just head over there. 
And as I thought, my Marcellas are not grown yet, but um, just remember the code, fairy ring code CKS is the first thing you want to do on every farm run. Uh, pick your Marcellas. Um, you won't be able to do them every herb run, but once every four hours, pick your Marcellas. And after that, I home teleport to Alcarid, and we're going to do the cactus patch there and harvest that. And we do get double cactus spines because I have completed the desert hard quest, or task. I've completed all the tasks actually, but um, yes, I have done the desert hard, so I do get double cactus spines. And after that, I do always um, do my Trollheim patch first, because that one is the longest one to get to, and you want to make sure that you complete all your patches within the time that your Juju farming potion takes to wear off. So it's quite easy to get the Trollheim patch. It is a bit of a run. Um, there is another teleport spell that you can unlock, but it's on the Lunar Spellbook. Uh, that teleports you straight to the farming patch, but yeah, it is on the Lunar Spellbook and it requires a lot of livid farm to be completed before you can use it, so that's why I don't use that one. But anyway, um, you just want to go to the Troll Stronghold. Um, if you've completed the two quests needed, you've already done the Troll Stronghold quest, so you probably already know how to get here because you do go to this area in the My Arms Big Adventure quest a couple times. And just enter the cave entrance. It is a bit of a run, as I said. And it's going to be right up this ladder here, so not too bad. We will survive. As soon as you feel like you're ready to start the herb run, prepare yourself, take a deep breath, drink your potion, and let's go. Let's get these herbs. So the last herb run I had was very disappointing, so hopefully this one isn't. Um, I gotta say, the highest herb run I have ever had is I had 81 herbs in one run once. So you can get a ton of herbs. Um, it just really depends on kind of your luck because sometimes your juju farming potion will just go pro and give you double herbs on every single pick and sometimes it won't hardly work at all. It does have a 33% chance to get give you double herbs, but that doesn't mean that um, one out of every three times it gives you double herbs. It just means that there, there is the chance that is there. And th since 33 is a pretty high number, um, you do get double herbs quite a bit of the time. And the ore doesn't help all that much with the double herbs, uh, but it is really nice with the fact that it protects your farming patches so they'll never die, which I, well, they will die, but they will not die within the first 20 minutes, and they take 75 minutes to grow, so that's basically like the first one-third of their growth time they cannot get diseased, which is pretty nice. Um, I did want to talk about one other thing. Um, I don't do this personally because it just takes up too much inventory space and it's kind of annoying, but if you would like to, you can plant either marigold or uh, limpwort seeds in the flower patches while you're doing the herb runs. And that's obviously going to be four patches because you travel to um, four herb patches that also have flower patches next to them. So if you'd like, bring four marigold seeds and also four um, super compost and just plant those in all of the flower patches. And that will get you a little bit extra money. It'll make you an extra, like... Um, 7 to 10k per run. Uh, they do die pretty often, so it kind of depends on that. But um, I don't do it just because it takes up a lot of inventory space and it's not that much money and it's just kind of annoying. But anyway, uh, picking the final super compost here, or the uh, Falador her patch, and I am getting bonus XP because I do have the Falador shield, uh, which gives you a slight amount of bonus XP uh, while harvesting anything in this patch here. I didn't bother to list it because. Uh, it is not affecting the money that you make from her herb runs at all. So it's just strictly for the bonus XP. So I have the Ardone Cape, which can tell you teleport you to the Ardone Farm. But if you do not have the Ardone Elite task done, uh, you will not be able to do this more than once a day because the um, the cloak, the Tier 3 cloak that you get from the hard Ardone tasks only allows you one herb patch teleport per day. So if you do not have the Elite Cloak, which I'm guessing a lot of you guys will not, uh, you just want to use the Ardone Lodestone, and it's not that much farther to the herb patch. It just adds another few seconds onto your herb run time, but it still works pretty well. So um, yeah, that's just what you're going to have to do if you don't have the Elite task done, or if you don't have even the hard task done. Um, again, this doesn't really affect the money that you make on herb runs. It just adds a few more seconds of time. Um, of ease of travel if you do have this cape. So the final herb patch is going to be in Catherby, right next to the Catherby Lodestone. There is no other way to teleport here faster unless you are on the Lunar Spellbook, which I am never on, so don't even worry about it. The Lodestone is very close to the herb patch. Anyway, 
So it looks like um, unless this herb died, it's going to be a fairly decent herb run. You can expect about 55 to 60 herbs per run um, or about 9 herbs per patch doing this method, which can net you, um, if you're lucky, up to about 500k per run. But more realistically, it's between 300 and 400k profit per run. That is counting in the fact of the Morcella mushrooms and the cactus spines that you're harvesting as well, um, since you don't really have to spend any money to harvest those because the Morcella mushroom spores are so cheap they're almost free. And the cactus you only have to plant once, and then you never have to plant it again. So anyway, that's about all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys will make a lot more money through your herb runs now that you know how to fully do it. And if you already knew how to fully do the herb runs, thank you for watching anyway, and farewell.